Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Cybersecurity Ranger. Before I begin the video, I will request you to please subscribe to the channel. So today we are going to talk about Metasploit. So the previous uh, videos that I uh, made were about vulnerability scanning. So we used Nesis and OpenVAS to perform or identify vulnerabilities on the host machines. So once you have identified the vulnerabilities, uh, then we go for the exploitation, or you can call it gaining access, right? So Metasploit is one of the most popular frameworks for exploitation. Obviously, it has a commercial version as well. Uh, we are going to use the open source. Um, apart from the Metasploit, there are uh, other tools as well, which are probably commercial that can be used for the exploitation purpose, right? So we'll talk about them as well in my, uh, you know, other videos. So let's get started. Now, Metasploit framework, it doesn't have a GUI interface. It used to have a GUI interface called the Armitage, but Armitage is no longer supported. So, um, there's another excellent tool for exploitation, Cobalt, but again, Cobalt is uh, is a commercial version. Uh, let's continue with the Metasploit. So in order to start Metasploit, you need to run the command MSF console. I strongly recommend that before you start the Metasploit, you can update your Kali Linux to have the latest version of uh, Metasploit. Okay, it's going to take a few seconds to get started. All right, so now we have the Metasploit framework up and running. You can see a little nice banner every time the banner keeps changing. Now, here you can see the version of the Metasploit and there are six or seven modules in Metasploit. So you can see here the first module is exploits. Then we have auxiliary module, post, payloads, encoders, nops, and evasion. So there are over 2000 exploits currently available. You can always import new exploits as well to the Metasploit framework. Um, so the exploits are basically once you identify the vulnerabilities, then you can find the relevant exploit in Metasploit framework that can be used to exploit the host operating system or the applications which are running on the operating system. So the most commonly used uh, modules within Metasploit is exploits, and then we also use payloads. The auxiliary modules, they are basically used for, um, you know, port scanning as well. Uh, fuzzers can also be used in auxiliary modules. The encoders, they're used to evade the firewalls or the IDS or anti-malware softwares. So we have the encoders as available as well. And I'm going to demonstrate in one of my videos how we can use these encoders. And we'll see how effective these encoders are to evade the uh, anti-malware detection or the firewall detection. We also have the NOPs. Uh, they are basically no operations. Uh, they're usually used to keep the payload size consistent during the exploitation phase. And then obviously we have the evasion module, which is used to evade the firewalls, right? Now the payload is the, um, the code that is going to be executed once you exploit a vulnerability. And this um, payload will actually decide what, uh, what are you going to achieve after the exploitation. So for example, if you want to get a reverse shell, uh, you need to select the appropriate payload. You want to get a VNC connection to the machine, uh, you have to select the payload. And then obviously for different applications, different pay, uh, different operating systems, there are different payloads which are available, right? So let's explore a little bit more into the Metasploit. And like I said, this is the introductory video. So this is for the beginners who are just getting started with the exploitation. Uh, it's going to help. So the first command is the help command. Now, when you write help command, um, it shows you what are the core commands which are which are there. So you can see here, question mark will give you the help menu 
or you can write help to get the help menu. And the banner will display the banner. Uh, connect, you can connect to a certain host. And there are plenty of other mod other commands that you can see. One of the important commands here is sessions. So if you want to, if you have multiple sessions to the multiple uh, hosts that you have exploited, you can interact with the sessions. Currently, we don't have any kind of sessions. So if I, if I execute this command, uh, we won't see anything, right? So there are no sessions which are active. Okay, um, there are two very commonly used commands and which are really, really important are uh, use and search. So I'm going to demonstrate how we can use these commands, but search is actually used for searching a certain payload. Oh, sorry, searching a certain module or an exploit, for example. So if I'm looking for a certain uh, exploit, Adobe exploit, or WordPress exploit, or a buffer flow exploit, I can use this search command. So either you need to know the exploit itself, or you, you can search it through the database of Metasploit. Uh, use command is used to interact with a certain module that you want to you know, uh, use uh, during the exploitation phase. The back command is also very commonly used that if you are using an exploit and then you want to go back and select a different exploit so you can use the um, back command, right? Another thing that you should know as well is that all the terminal commands, like for example, I want to get the IP address of my Ethernet interface. So the if config command can run within Metasploit framework as well. So you don't need to open a new terminal and run this command, right? So most of the commands that are uh, that are used, so for example, if I'm trying to uh, test the connectivity of a host that I'm trying to exploit, you can also run it through the Metasploit framework as well. So you don't need to exit it, right? You can use the clear command to clear the terminal Okay, so let's start with the search command. So for example, I'm trying to look for an exploit which is related to WordPress, for instance, right? So when I write search and WordPress, it will give me a whole list of the exploits which are available or can be used with the WordPress. Now this is a very long list of the exploits. So like I said, uh, you probably can also do some uh, internet research about the exploit that you want to use or you have to to find out um, in the Metasploit database, right? So for instance, if I'm looking for a net API exploit, which is a, a bit more specific uh, search, so you'll see that, uh, sorry, search net API. You can see here that um, I get four exploits, uh, which are ending with net API. So this is, a bit more specific or a bit more narrow re narrow search that I just performed, and then I get the exact uh, exploits uh, that I wanted. You can also go to exploit-db website uh, and look for the exploits there, and then you can search them in the Metasploit framework. So uh, let me just show you that as well. In the meantime, so for instance, I'm looking for SSH exploit, so I can search with the SSH and then look for the exploit that works for me, right? So this is how you use the search command. Okay, so let's just try to show you the exploit-db. So this is the exploit database as well. So this is also one more place where you can search for a certain exploit or a vulnerability, and then you can uh, look for that exploit within the Metasploit framework. So for instance, I'm looking for Adobe exploits, for instance, right? So you can see here, there are plenty of Adobe exploits uh, that you can use, and the type of the exploit is also mentioned uh, the platform on which this exploit is going to work, and obviously the author that uh, the author of the exploit, right? So this is another source where you can look for the exploits. All right, so let's just say that I want to use a certain exploit. So uh, I will search for 
multi slash handler. So let's just say that I want to use this particular exploit, which is called multi handler. Uh, I'm going to copy this exploit. And now I'm going to show you how you can use the exploit. Obviously, we're not going to get anything out of it because I'm not demonstrating how to hack a certain application or an operating system. Uh, but it's just an introduction that how you can actually use an expire. So you can always use the tab key as well on your keyboard. So if I write mult M U L and then press the tab key, it automatically completes. And then I write H A N and press the tab key. It completes the command as well. All right. So now you can see here that it says it's using uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the payload by default. So, here you can see that some of the exploits it will uh, it will have an, a default payload already selected for it, right? If you want to change it, obviously you can change it as well. So, so once you are here uh, inside the exploit multi slash handler, the next command that you should know is show options, right? So what the show options does is that it tells you what options are required for this particular exploit. Um, so for instance, here we can see that the L port, the local port is is by default selected, which is triple four, a tetra four, sorry. Uh, it's not necessary that you have to use a tetra four. You can use any port on which you want the reverse connection. Uh, you can also see here the L host feed is empty. So the L host is the local host, means my attacking machine IP address, right? So I need to set the L host here. So there is no remote host required for this. The target uh, uh, IP address is not required for this particular exploit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check my IP address, which is 36.133. And then I'm going to set L host and then the IP address of my Kali Linux, right? So I have set the L host. Now let's go back and check the show option. When you do the show options, now you can see that I have uh, so, um, I have uh, selected the L host, the local host. Uh, I can also change the L port. So I don't want it on triple four or tetra four, for example, maybe it's blocked by the formal. So, so I'm going to use L port as 80, for instance, right? So again, I will show right show options to see if the port has been changed and again you can see the listing port the local port is changed to port 80 and the local ip address is the kali linux ip address right now i like i said it depends on the type of exploit that you're using it may require different options uh, so you need to know for a certain exploit that you're trying to do what are the options that i need to configure or set now here you can see that the payload option is already um, uh, selected by default, but I can change it. So here it says generic reverse shell. Uh, I can also show you by running show. And uh, now I can also show you the payloads, but and there are plenty of them. So obviously uh, we need to know what exactly the payload will work for a certain exploit, right? You can see here, there are plenty of payloads here, right? So like I said, not every payload is going to work with every, every exploit. So you need to know for a certain exploit what payload is going to work. Now, how do you set the payload? Uh, well, let's just say that I want to use a Metapreter. Let's just say search Metapreter, right? Now, let's just say that I want to use the, the Metapreter reverse TCP payload, right? This one, for instance, right? So I'm going to select, in fact, let me just, okay, so let me just show you how I can set the payload. Set, either I can copy one of them, like for example, if I want to use this one, I can copy it and then I just write set payload and set payload. 
and then Windows X64 metapredator reverse TCP, right? This is one way to set the payload. Um, or I can set the payload. I don't know why it didn't work. Uh, I think the syntax was a bit wrong. So for example, I think you, you have to give a space and it's not like a continuous. Uh, so yeah, after the payload, you have to put a space. So Windows, let's say metapredator. forward slash reverse underscore TCP, right? So now I have selected a different payload. It's not a generic reverse shell, it's a metapredator. We'll talk about metapredator later on. What are the advantages of metapredator? Because this is one of the most amazing uh, payloads that you can use. You have a lot of control on the target system once you exploit, right? Now let's go back to show options. Now here you can see uh, the payload has been changed. The local host is configured. The L port is configured. Now, all you need to do is to say exploit, right? Exploit. And then the exploit will start working, right? Now, depends on what exactly the exploit is, how exactly the exploit is supposed to work. In this case, I selected a multi handler. Like I said, I'm going to make another video on the multi handler and how we can. Uh, exploit a system by using multi-handler but here you can see that now it has started and it's waiting for a connection from the target machine once that target machine is exploited and then you will get the reverse shell right so right now of course we cannot expect anything as i'm not demonstrating the exploitation uh, now once you're done with the the exploit and if you want to go back um Another thing that once you have the session, for example, that I was able to exploit an operating system and I want to take that session to the background. So, well, I don't have any session right now. So I cannot take it to the background because once you are in the session, you can write the command background and that session will go into the background and then you can have another session and so on and so forth. So if you want to go back, you can just write go back. And then uh, let me just show you the search auxiliary module. So these are plenty of auxiliary modules available. Now, some of the things that are done by the uh, NMAP, for example, like uh, if you are trying to find out the open ports, um, there is an auxiliary module that can be used for uh for port scanning as well uh there are auxiliary modules that can be used for uh, for fuzzing as well uh for uh, http uh, sorry ftp um, uh, brute force as well so there are plenty of uh, nice auxiliary modules that i'm going to demonstrate in my coming videos right so i think that's it about the introduction of metasploit i hope you have enjoyed the video please like and subscribe to the channel because i will keep on uploading uh, these videos and uh, and uh, try to complete the whole uh, penetration testing course in my videos in which you will learn starting from reconnaissance till uh, reconnaissance, scanning, exploitation, uh, privilege escalation, persistence, and then how you can cover your tracks, right? Thank you guys and have a nice day.